It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We're starting off with a starred empire phase. Our only starting empire is the Koreans. Flush has popped them over into Korea. They're right in the heart. I would say that would be the heart. So, or maybe Mongolia is the heart. I don't know. But it's kind of on the outside and the heart should be on the inside. It seems kind of heart heart-like if you look at the surrounding purple. Anyway, right in the heart of Giraffe's Mongolian Empire. Um, I'm not sure what kind of damage he's going to be able to do there. I mean, he's going to be able to chip away at it, but point-wise. And that's what that's what he needs to be thinking about with Giraffe. He needs to get rid of her points right now so that she doesn't surpass him on this track. So maybe by, you know, if he can harry them enough, or if he can take the Mongolian capital right here, that might make her want to get rid of the Mongolians, in which case, you know, he's done some good there. Trade in progress phase, uh, draft, or not draft, sorry, run. She went with the modern state to trade this time instead of the Pharaonic Egyptians, uh, probably because she, she decided to build up with the Egyptians, did some production there. Um, not a lot of money-making capability. All of the areas she lost were areas with cities, which are the areas that make money. So anyway, she traded with the Mongols, with the modern state. Her thinking being, if she could trade them far enough so that they, you know, if she loses the trade, the Mongols were here, they would end up here, which would make it so that they would lose all of their leaders, which are big scorers for Giraffe. She's been sending them to the labyrinth and scoring that way. And she remember, she doesn't want Giraffe to score well. So now she's becoming a little more... Um, Little less, little, little less com committed to destroying one or the other, since Flesh has these Russians. So the F Russians are definitely weaker than the Mongols or, or giraffe in general. So she won the trade, went forward. Um, was there anything else? Oh yeah, the the other interesting thing about that was she was able to steal this these wreaths from the Mongols, and that made it so that they no longer have near as much. Uh, cultural power as they had before. So I'm going to have to refigure. The Egyptians maybe have taken the lead again now that the Japanese are out. We'll see. In maneuver news, we saw the Spanish retake Castile from the French. Uh, that's, that's really made the French quite small. And they used a lot of their forces to take Castile and then lost it to the Spanish. Now, that, that definitely... Um, yeah, see, I don't know if that was a net game for Flush or not to, to start the French and do that attack. It definitely hurt Giraffe in points-wise. I mean, she'd probably be ahead of him right now if he hadn't done that. But then if he had been doing something else instead of doing the French or if he had had them spread out over Europe or something like that, perhaps they would have scored better? I don't know. I mean, he's scoring the, the Europe points with the Russians. I think that might be... Might be why he did it the way he did. Though the French, you know, if they had all those wheat spaces, they could build up to be quite an army. Uh, anyway, regardless, he went this way instead. Uh, lost the territory. Greatly de depleted the Spanish. If they hadn't had to fight off the French, they would have been sp spreading out into Africa and confronting Runt. I don't think it was a very smart choice. I think it would have been better for Flush if he had let Giraffe run into Runt and them fight each other. Oh, well. The round ends with the departure of the Muggles, uh, Mug Halls, Mug Halls. They haven't, they weren't here very long. They popped up, did some rather damage, rather damaging damage to the Russians' point scoring capability. They got, they got them out of Asia and India and then disappeared. If she'd kept them around, that might have been wise, especially since they built, built up here. I don't know, because now they can just go back down and, you know, they score if they go here, and then they score further if they get to India. Um, but then she did, you know, she did cause Flush to build up over here. I don't know. I think she probably should have kept him around, but I think she has other plans. She did use a Vizier card to take a particular card off the discard pile, and I, I have it on good authority that she plans to start a new empire. So looking at who she had to get rid of, she wanted to keep the Spanish, I guess, to keep competing with the French, maybe. I don't know why she wanted to keep the Spanish. I guess they're scoring better than the Muggles. I think it was about points, actually. And the Mongols were stronger than the Muggles. That's probably why she did it. Um, on the progress track, she's past flush now. They're, bo they're both very close, but she's she has a better scoring potential. Uh, his Koreans 
are nice looking and all. They, ha they have a nice money-making capability, but their scoring potential isn't very good right now. Um, I guess their best best hope is to score to start scoring on money, which every time they take a destiny action, they can score off their cities. They just need to get more cities, which means you know if they can take some take some take apart the Mongols, there the Mongols have quite a lot of urban areas built up that that would be nice. Which actually the Japanese built up. And then the Mongols took over, and now if the Koreans can get that from them, that'd be good. The downside, possibly, for Flush here is the Koreans are further ahead on the progress track than the Mongols. So if the Mongols start taking areas from the Koreans, each of those areas is worth a point to Giraffe. And he does not want Giraffe to have points right now. I'm going to go ahead and start another turn. That empire that Giraffe nabbed with her Vizier card turned out to be the Japanese. Yes, they're back after she kind of choked them out with uh, the Mongolians, held them on their island until Flush gave them up to the wind. She brought them back uh, under her control, and they are an improved, greatly improved uh, Japanese. Well, improved in some ways, not in others. They're, they're maybe culturally inferior. They, ju they, they just have stone and... Um, logging to go go for them. They don't have any wreaths or any sort of accomplishments or anything, but they do have submarines. And if you recall, the other Japanese, the older ones, they only had these little triremes or canoes or whatever, which are vastly inferior to submarines, as I have talked about at great length. Welcome back, Japan. So we had one start, empire start this round, uh, this turn, no production, no trade in progress. That means we're going to see a lot of maneuvering and destinying and civilizing because there wasn't any other actions. We already saw one maneuver. It was the Mongols, and Gir Giraffe had a really nice card for her right now. Uh, it was mass migration. Her the problem with the Mongols currently is that they have some big threats, the Koreans and the modern state over here. And they're too spread out, so they can't really defend themselves. They couldn't really defend themselves. Well, with the mass migration, they were able to vacate areas. Vacate areas means you can leave an area, which um, is super helpful to draft. So she was able to bolster up her defenses here and here. Not a lot. I mean, she still she still ran into some movement problems. She couldn't just bring things way over, but she started to move her forces over there, protecting her capital a little more, bunched up some ships to give room for the Japanese, and then also moved in North America to this this area here, the Great Plains, uh, in order to protect that wheat space and kind of shut down the modern state. I mean, the modern state's not a, a real big threat anyway, but the Koreans definitely are. Runs maneuvers for the turn. She actually maneuvered both her Persians and her Pharaonic Egyptians, took the point hit. Again, Runt's not really worried about points right now, though she's starting to lose her lead slowly. Um, Persians are now in position to threaten the Russians. Uh, they don't have a, they're not in the best position for that though. They have to strike across rivers, except right here. If they struck right here, they wouldn't have to strike across rivers. But the Russians uh, are much more culturally military than the Persians. The Persians have really no culture to speak of. The Russians have the science advantage in two fields and they have the, the um, swords advantage so they can play cards. Still, that is a threat for the Russians and something that Flush is going to be thinking about. Pharaonic Egyptians, they're starting to spread out, trying to recapture their new, their, their old empire once more. Um, yeah, Rudd had to, had to choose whether or not to hold on to them, and she decided to. There's just so, so much built into these guys with, with all of this. And, yeah, I don't, I don't know if on the whole it's been a good decision for the others to get rid of their, their big empires. So sometimes they have been a drag. Flush also did a double maneuver, uh, took the point cost. It was a difficult choice for him, but he needed to maneuver both with the Russians and the Koreans, so he did it. Koreans won their fight here, uh, so they're starting to to expand their empire, Vladivostok. Now they have two five cities. They get that. They get ten bucks then every time they choose destiny, which is nice. The Russians just kind of resituated themselves, partially in response to the uh, encroachment of the Persians, and also they moved into Asia, so he's going to be able to score some points with them. Yeah, since they're tied with the Koreans, he can decide which one gets the points. Um, interesting, we had a lot of lot of adventuring this turn. Five leaders adventured, and they were all successful. All low, low rolls, all of them. Even Dr. Hume, he won a strength challenge. 
flush just kind of did a shot in the dark there because he really wants to get the points at this point. He rolled a four when it was like fairly difficult. Dr. Hume, uh, Peter the Great, I believe, is not very strong. Red is not very strong, but he was able to pull it off. He wanted it badly enough. And the round is going to end like so many have so far with the loss of an empire. This one, we didn't get that attached to. It was the French. They had their attack on Spain. They messed them up a little bit. They left. I don't, I, you know, again, like I said, I don't know who, whether that was worth Flush's time or not. But that's what he did. Uh, and right before they left, a fire broke out in um, the Iberian Peninsula, courtesy of Runt. Uh, and then we had some scoring. Giraffe still scoring pretty good. She's got 11. That's, that's nice. Um, Japanese are good fast scorers. They they you know they have that. They start out with two, just for not just for being where they start, and they can only go up from there. Um, Flush got six. Runt's not doing too bad actually. Her uh, modern state since they're in the lead in progress, they score three every turn. And the Persians actually have them the second, their second place in uh, Asia now, so they're actually scoring too. Not that it matters that much to her, but she's not fallen super behind.